The story begins with a character named Sal Cooper, holding his sword despite being beaten up. Becomes the Cooper family's most useful shadow. A man behind the Knight Army says to him, Sal Cooper, as the shadow of the family, you have betrayed the family and concluded with the enemy for your own personal gain. In the name of the new family head, I order your immediate execution. Sal Cooper was in a desperate situation and trying to understand how he got framed. He cursed the people standing in front of him. With the remaining strength in his body, he swung his sword to target the family head as the last resort for setting him up. He dedicated all his life to his family, but it eventually became a hindrance to them. When the protagonist was about to reach the head of the family, the knights stabbed him. He vowed to take revenge in the next life. As a boy awakens in dirty clothes and jumps up, he begins to think, where has he come? Is he in hell? All of a sudden, a maid poured water on him, ordering him to clean himself because someone was coming to take him. In anger, the boy stared at the maid, but the maid slapped him and shouted at him for his behavior. The boy falls on the ground and wonders, why does she call me a brat? He then sees his face in the reflection. He laughs wickedly, and while clenching his fist with excitement, he thinks that I, Sal Cooper, has actually reborn. He was formerly part of the Shadow of Cooper family in the previous life. With the other kids, they trained all the shadows to do all the family's dirty work. The reward family also gave them was endless riches and glory. Thus, the shadows endure the hardships. As the illegitimate son, the protagonist was determined to change his fate, getting bullied by others. He was talentless and so he trained to death. He took the initiative to fight for the family. In the end of countless slaughter, he gained victory for the family. He thought the family would welcome him with precious rewards, but unexpectedly he was framed. He then learned the harsh truth about the shadows. Alan cast the shadow oath. Because of it all, the strength of Sal Cooper was transferred to head of the family, while the pain of Alan injuries was also for Sal Cooper to bear. As for the money and glory, they are for bugs like you. At the end of his life, Sal Cooper struck with all of his remaining strength. He understood blood magic and stole back all the powers which was taken away from him by Alan. Three-year-old Sal Cooper swears not to repeat his previous mistakes. In the middle of thinking, his stomach began to growl like he hadn't eaten for three days. He wickedly looks at a rat nearby, thinking he will eat it to satisfy his hunger. Two men came in looking for Sal Cooper. One of them called Sal a trash. He told him that young Master Allen wants to see him, so he had to accompany him. While the guards dragged him, Sal was thinking that at this moment, he was selected to become the shadow. However, all memories of the initiation had disappeared. That must have been the time he was cursed. However, he thinks of an idea to take his revenge and bites on the hand of one of the guard. The guard yells at him and tries to punch him. Sal Cooper, with his tiny body, dodges the punch and pulls out his sword. One of the guard fell on the ground, stunned when he realized the little kid knew swordsmanship. Sal Cooper, too excited to hold a weapon in his hand. Enjoying the journey so far? Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button to keep the adventure going. All right, let's dive back into the story. Shadow Oath is a form of ancient blood magic. The caster, who is the master of the oath, only needs to pay a small amount of blood to make the target become his shadow. The shadow will be unable to harm the oath master and will have to suffer the injuries sustained by the oath master in his place. At the same time, all the shadow's growth and abilities will be transferred to the oath master. Due to the cruel nature of magic, the Empire issued an order 100 years ago to destroy all grimoires with records of shadow oaths, preventing anyone from using them. In the hall, the young master of the family slaps the guy who was bitten by the protagonist. Alan, the successor of the Cooper family, scolds him and says, To be bullied by a wild dog? Did the Cooper family raise you for nothing? The shadow says, I'm so sorry, young master. It's because my subordinate failed his duty. Alan, walking toward the Sal Cooper, says, To think you're daring enough to touch my own people. Someone lock him up in the dungeon. 
he is stopped by a woman, Alan's mother, and the matriarch of the Cooper family. As she walks toward Alan, she says, that kid has not been looked after since he was young, so his behavior is normal. Emphasizing that now is not the time to punish him. The most important thing is to take his oath. She comes closer and whispers, don't forget what your mother told you. As Alan stares at Sal, he thinks, I have no idea why my mother chose this lowly bastard child to become my shadow. When I find the chance, I will definitely ruin him. He happily agrees to the mother's request. She continues to say, your mother will bring these people out and won't bother you. And passing the order to cast the sound proofing spell, she orders everyone else to leave, except for the young master and the children. After everyone leaves, Alan fills a golden cup with water and says, from this moment forward, you'll be a member of the Shadow family. Every child standing there swore that they will dedicate all their life for the family, while Sal only gazing on the water in his hands. Without a second thought like everyone else, he drinks it. All the children except Alan fainted. Alan, with an evil smile on his face, make a cute on his hand, dropping a drop of blood in front of the children. A huge magical array was formed on the ground. All of you will provide your strength to me, while all the harm I sustain will be suffered by you, Alan remarked. A few moments later, the ground was visible with purple energy transferring from the children to Alan's body. Alan ponders, I can feel the power entering my body. The shadow oath, did it work? As he turned around to call his mother, he felt a sharp pain in his knee and collapsed. He started to panic, wondering, why can't I move my legs? Could this be the after effects of the shadow oath? But the mother didn't say anything to me. Calling his mother, he tries to crawl on the floor. Suddenly, Sal remarks, you really are a coward that only hides behind your mother's back. But what a shame. In order to not disturb you before you finish the shadow oath, your mother cast a soundproof spell. No matter how loud you cry, they won't hear you, Sal remarked. Alan was terrified and looked behind him to find Sal Cooper with a murderous aura. Alan asks, how are you awake and how do you know about the blood oath? Sal replies, this is not the only thing I know. I wonder how your highness would react if I reverse the blood oath. Following this, he struck the blade into the ground. With his past life experience, Sal was successfully able to reverse the blood oath. While Alan's heart was aching, he yelled at Sal, asking him what he was about to do. What am I planning to do, Sal ponders. In my previous life, I paid the price of my life in order to steal back everything that belonged to me. And in this life, I am simply returning the favor. Alan's yell was heard by the guards and his mother standing outside the hall. The thought of what might have happened to him made his mother anxious. The night at the Cooper family's castle followed the oath-taking ceremony. Alan's mother, the matriarch of the Cooper family, was sitting on his side inside his room. The butler briefed her about Alan's condition, saying, Madam, the young master's body is fine. He fainted temporarily because of excess magic use. He further says, as for the soundproof spell, it was because of the servant's incompetence that the spell broke. I have sent that person to be executed. In a cold voice, the matriarch said, feed the corpse to the dogs. The butler replied, but madam, the young master seems unsettled. After all, he's young and to do this kind of thing, it's inevitable that there will be a burden on the heart. While Alan was lost in thoughts, he doesn't remember what happened at the oath-taking ceremony. Concerned about Alan, the mother put a hand on his head. In a comforting tone, the mother said, Alan, you don't have to feel troubled by the shadows. The strong prey upon the weak in this work, and you are. Alan interrupted and pushed her hand off his head and said, How is this possible? A dark face spreads across his face as he says, I am the future head of the Cooper family. Those wretched creatures should be born to sacrifice their lives for me. Right, mother? His mother laughed and happily hugged him. She asked if there is any reward you want, let me know. Sal Cooper was listening to all the nonsense from the balcony. He remarks, what a deep bond between a mother and a son. But what a shame. From this day forth, Alan Cooper has become my shadow. When he recalls his previous life, he mentions, 
When I fought for the family, I discovered a blood magic index that had a record of shadow oath. I happily presented it to the family, but I didn't expect myself to become the family's sacrifice. I was fortunate that I looked through the book contents and combined that with the experience of stealing back my power in my previous life. Right now, I just need to use a little blood as a cost to reverse the shadow oath and swap the position of Alan and myself. This three-year-old me is completely incapable of resisting them. From now on, I must become stronger. With fearless eyes filled with passion for his revenge, he further deduced, and so, the first step to becoming stronger is the flaming cliff. This is the Cooper family's testing ground, created by the Cooper family to select strong shadows willing to sacrifice themselves for the family. He further mentions, it is similar to how Prometheus stole the flame for humankind and willingly sacrificed himself, enduring the pecks of the eagle day and night. The Cooper family also threw this group of children, 10 years old and below, into the flaming cliff. They ordered them to trek through the thorns and commanded the eagles to gnaw on their flesh. Even with their final breaths, they are not allowed to give up. Until the first shadow scaled the peak, and obtain the blessings of the Eagle Griffin. He received a body that will never be injured, no matter how many times it is attacked or pecked. Enjoying the journey so far? Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button to keep the adventure going. All right, let's dive back into the story. One day later, a guy with a bow instructs a bunch of kids, you only have three days left. Whatever method you boys use, there is only one objective and that is to reach the peak alive. This man's name was Enos Walker, the shadows training officer. Switching his tone from instruction to evil maniac, he says, don't forget, whoever forfeits will be sentenced to death after three days. As he raises the whistle, he yells, all right, shadows, set off for your bright future. Every kid standing there starts running as soon as he blows the whistle. But the officer was shocked to see that a silver-haired kid named Sal Cooper was quite composed despite the fact that his life depends on it. The assistant instructor tells him, This is Sal, the illegitimate son who angered the young master. Sal, with his bare hands, starts to climb the cliff. Looking at this scene, both officers laugh, saying, Look at this kid! He didn't take the slope, but instead his is trying to reach the peak by climbing with his bare hands. I bet he will fall before even reaching the halfway mark. Ah. The assistant makes another comment. Why don't we go over to collect his corpse now? The officer denies his idea with a smile of evil excitement. No need. I suddenly thought of a fascinating idea. Now is the perfect time for that guy to show up. Under the bloody sky, a griffin was spotted flying over the cliff. The kids who were climbing the cliff were stunned to see his appearance. All of them could not fathom what it was. But when they got close to it, one of them said, It's a monster. Sal had finally reached the top of the mountain. In front of him was a huge griffin and a pile of children's corpses. The officer standing below decided to use the griffin to get rid of Sal, as he was the one who had angered Alan. The officer was so excited and aimed his bow at the griffin, saying, Let's make the young master happy. He released the arrow and at a high speed, it gazed at the griffin's face, making the griffin furious. As the griffin only saw Sal in front of him, he attacked to kill Sal Cooper. Sal dodged his attack and used his knife to defend himself. Sal mentions that the only way to quickly scale to the peak and obtain the griffin's blessing is to tame it. He jumps on the griffin to attack. Sal stabs the griffin on the head, then jumps back and anticipates Griffins are stubborn creatures by nature and possess human-like intelligence. If I don't completely subdue it, it will never be tamed. As he ran towards the griffin, he unleashed a sword technique called Shadow Blade. But the griffin did not take much damage and countered Sal's attack. Griffin unleashes the tornado attack on Sal. Sal was about to fall down the cliff, but somehow he grabbed on and climbed back. Then... Sal took a moment to think about what strategy to use, stating that with my current physique and strength, I will be blown away before I even get close to the griffin. Luckily, there's a solution, as long as I reach that cave. 
While Sal looked at the cave, the griffin prepared to attack again with his powerful wind energy. After evading all his attacks, Sal runs towards the cave. Suddenly, he realized he wasn't going to dodge this attack. He used the griffin's wind attack to get closer to the cave, and he activated the shadow oath to keep the damage to a minimum. Due to the shadow oath, Alan, who was peacefully drinking his tea, dropped his cup and fainted. Using his strategy, Sal was able to reach the cave entrance successfully. He ran inside the cave while Griffin chased him, saying, Little Loach, there's no way to run. However, he suddenly stopped, baffled by the scene. Sal held the baby Griffin in his hands and pointed his knife at it. The Griffin asks, What will you do to my baby? Sal replies, Relax, I won't hurt it. Sal proposes the offer to help his wingless baby fly. But of course he has a condition. While waiting for Sal to die, the two officers start walking towards the cave to collect his body. But suddenly the griffin appears behind them with Sal riding on it. All right, it's payback time, Sal says. The griffin, without wasting any moment, attacked and swallows both of them. After that, griffin says to Sal, I've done what I promised. Now it's your turn to fulfill your end of the deal. Sal asks Griffin to bring him to the secret realm at the northernmost of this mountain range, to the land of stone. Both of them stood before the huge stone gate. Before entering, Griffin mentions, as we agreed, you will only take the sword of Prometheus and help me get Medusa's blood to cure my child. Sure, no problem, Sal remarks. However, Sal was not aiming for a sword, nor was he trying to help the griffin in any way. What he wanted was the griffin to destroy the secret realm. Griffin pushed the door open, revealing a snake-headed woman inside. Both of them moved forward to face her. As they stepped through the gate, the statues guarding Medusa sprang to life, launching an unexpected assault. Amidst the chaos of battle, the griffin turned to Sal, questioning the sudden aggression. Sal says he doesn't know either. The force of Griffin's strikes shattered all three statues. But to their astonishment, the statues inexplicably reconstructed themselves, leaving both of them bewildered by the surreal sight. Sal explains, Dano, Enyo, and Pemfredo all share the same eye and tooth, just like the Greya sisters in mythology, because they and Medusa are the daughter of the sea deities. Therefore, they can control the seawater, so run. In the frantic retreat, Griffin says, What's the point of running? Hurry up and think of some way to find the sword. I am searching for it, Sal says. Griffin warns him that if this continues, this place will collapse and both of us will die. Sal, with a concerned face, says, I am looking. Maybe there is a way written on runes of the wall. Yet, beneath his anxious facade, Sal harbored a hidden agenda, a desire to witness the collapse of the secret realm, and he will escape from the secret tunnel he discovered in his previous life. He stopped and thought that this amount of destruction was not enough. He deceives the griffin, saying that the runes say to take out the eye hanging to the roof. The griffin looks in the eye. He jumps and takes out the eye, and the water deity is taken down as its power is depleted. Revealing the eye's significance, Sal hinted, because the runes say that Perseus discovered the location of Medusa only after stealing the eye of the Grey A.A. sisters. So the eye is the Grey A.A. sisters' weakness. The griffin replies, What about the sword? Where's the blood that can treat my offspring? Did the runes say anything? Sal points his finger and says, The sword is over there. He further explains, Perseus used this sword to behead Medusa, spilling red and green blood. The red blood can poison all living souls to death, while the green blood can heal all illnesses. But these are just legends. There is another secret for the secret realm. Griffin asks, what secret? Sal replies in a lower, deeper tone. The emergence of the sword of Perseus is the time of Medusa's revival. Enjoying the journey so far? Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. As Sal completed his explanation, Medusa awakened and started to attack the griffin. 
Sal takes this opportunity and runs toward the secret tunnel, thinking once Medusa's statue activates, it won't stop unless it's beheaded with the Sword of Perusis. As he was about to reach the tunnel, Medusa's changed her target and attacked Sal. He successfully dodged the attack. With Medusa right before him, he thinks, what is happening? Where is the griffin? Due to fear, the griffin shrinks his body like a cat and hides behind a rock. When he sees Sal confronting Medusa, he yells, you can tell at a glance that this guy won't be easy to deal with. I'll leave the rest to you. I don't want to die. Sal looked at him and thought that the griffin could shrink his body. At that moment, Medusa once again initiated the attack. Sal evaded the thought. It was fortunate I passed this secret realm once in my previous life, so I'm not out of options. He then runs toward the knight's armor, standing in front of him to acquire the shield, thinking, I would then be able to use the shield's reflection to lower the risk of looking directly into Medusa's eyes and turning into stone from carelessness. Medusa attacked as he was about to approach the shield. But thankfully, Sal grabbed the shield, defending himself from her gaze attack. Sal was blown away because of the intensity. She was too powerful for Sal to handle with just the shield, and the secret exit was destroyed. Thoughts raced through his mind in the life and death situation. He speculated, with my current level of talent, I cannot wield the sword of Perseus. Since Medusa didn't stop her attacks, Sal took the chance and ran toward the sword. He rushes to wield the sword, thinking he will risk everything. As he grabbed the sword, the sword was picked up, and he was to the point where Sal was in disbelief. Unfortunately, Medusa was able to pierce Sal's stomach, landing a critical below. As Medusa picked up Sal, the thoughts of being a failure and how he could pick up the sword rushed through his mind. Thoughts of his past life flashed through his mind as he was about to die. Seeing Alan's face and the urge for revenge on the Cooper family boiled his blood to the point that he cut through all the strains of Medusa. A sudden surge of mana flowed through him. Even the griffin was baffled. Sal angrily looked at Medusa, and within a moment, her head was lying on the ground. Enjoying the journey so far? Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button to keep the adventure going.